David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen from the luxury brand SD DuPont. And the pen I have for you is the first in a new series for them, and that pen is the Shakespeare. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the SD DuPont Shakespeare, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Coles of London, who are the U.S. distributors for SD DuPont, as well as Visconti. Uh, SD DuPont was founded back in 1872 in France by Simon Tussaud DuPont, hence the ST. Uh, the company was focused on leather briefcases until the 1940s when they produced their first solid gold lighter. Uh, they've become very well known for their lighters and they branched out into creating writing instruments in the early 1970s. Uh, the pen arrives in this very nice piano black lacquered box. There is a plaque on top with SD DuPont and William Shakespeare's signature, which I'll discuss more about here in a bit. And then inside we have the pen. It actually sits on this tray, which can be removed, and underneath we have some documentation and a fair amount of storage space, if you'd care to keep anything else in here as well. Um, the plaque on this tray is similar to the one on top of the box, but this one includes the number of this limited edition model. Uh, this is a limited edition of 1,564 units, 1,564 being the year William Shakespeare was born. For the sake of this review, I'm going to go under the assumption you're knowledgeable enough to know a little bit about Shakespeare and why he was widely regarded as one of the greatest writers and playwrights in English language. Uh, in the late 1500s, they had Shakespeare. In 2020, we have Tiger King. Oh, how times have changed. But I could imagine Joe Exotic being one of the odd forest characters in A Midsummer Night's Dream, though. Well, here is the SD DuPont Shakespeare. Uh, the Shakespeare is the first model included in the new SD DuPont sword collection. Uh, the name being inspired by the famous quote from Edwards Bulwer Lytton, uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now, Lytton also being the gentleman who uh, began one of his novels with the infamous words, it was a dark and stormy night. Uh, this collection is meant to embody the power of words, the power of writing, and declares the pen a powerful weapon to express ideas or feelings. Uh, the pen has a tapered design uh, with a metal base coated in natural lacquer and yellow gold plated trim. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the unique cap of the pen. Uh, as you can see here, the top of this finial is adorned with a skull. This represents the skull of poor Yorick, whose skull served as a symbol for death and an omen of what was yet to come in one of Shakespeare's most famous works, Hamlet. I think this skull looks interesting. Now, this might be a bit nitpicky, but the skull depicted here is a complete skull with the mandible, uh, the jawbone. Uh, in Hamlet, the scene where the skull shows up, uh, there is a grave digger digging a grave and presents Hamlet with the skull of Yorick, the king's jester. Uh, in the majority of versions I've seen of this play, the skull, since it was literally just dug up out of the ground, was missing the mandible. Now, a skull missing the mandible uh, just kind of uh, has a different look to it, which might not have looked as interesting on this finial here. So I think this was more of obs an observation on my part than a complaint. Uh, below the finial, we have the clip, which I like. Uh, it's in the shape of a sword, matching the name of the sword collection. And it is topped with the ST DuPont's D logo. I like that this D also serves as the hilt of the sword with the cursive elements representing a quillion and a guard on this diamond-shaped double-edged sword. I have never held an authentic sword in my hand, but I have watched enough forged in fire in order to at least sound like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, the cap is lacquer over metal and contains text from a Shakespeare manuscript. Now, this is not text from one of his plays. To the best of my knowledge, those in his handwriting don't actually currently exist. Uh, the only lasting handwriting we have from Shakespeare are small handfuls of legal documents. Uh, he wrote in the style known as secretary hand, which was common in England at the time and was the cursive style that was taught in schools. I really can't make out any of the words here, so his handwriting is even worse than mine, which is quite an achievement. 
If you look closely, uh, the lacquer on this cap actually contains a fair amount of glitter. Uh, it really adds a subtle element of depth to the material. Uh, you really don't even notice the glitter unless you're looking at this material with a loop or very much up close. Uh, the cap concludes with a band and transitions into a wider band which is on the barrel. Uh, this band is engraved with the company name of SD DuPont on one side and on the other side it says Paris made in France in the number of this specific pen. That band transitions into the brown lacquer of the barrel which near the end has a representation of William Shakespeare's signature. Now, I say representation for a reason. There are only six known copies of William Shakespeare's signature. Uh, it is the most valuable signature in the world, each valued over $5 million. Uh, each of the signatures varies greatly in clarity and penmanship, and while the signature here isn't an exact match to any of the six, it most closely resembles the one found on the first page of his will. Uh, the barrel tapers down, and on the end it is metal, rounded with a groove for the posting mechanism. The cap snaps off and underneath we have this 14 karat gold nib available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, this nib isn't unique to the limited edition pen. Uh, it is the same one that I've seen on a number of SD DuPont models. Uh, this isn't the largest nib, but I feel that it's size appropriate for this pen. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is metal and fairly narrow. Uh, it begins with a ridge and then angles up to an angled rise in the remainder of the barrel. While I'm no fan of metal sections, especially narrow ones, I do find that the ridge on the end here is sufficient enough for me to maintain a decent grip on the section. Uh, though the base of the barrel is metal, uh, I wouldn't categorize it as heavy. It is very comfortable in the hand. The cap actually weighs more than the barrel. Uh, the cap does snap to post, and it does post securely, but since it is heavier than the barrel, I do find that it back weights the pen and throws off the balance a bit, so I do prefer to use this pen unposted. And it's plenty long enough to do comfortably, even for longer writing sessions. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, one of which is provided, and a converter is included as well. Uh, since there is an abundance of metal on this pen, eye dropping it would not be advised. Now, SD DuPont is a luxury brand, and this pen comes with a luxury price. It retails for right around $1,400. At authorized dealers, you're going to find it for about 10% less, or maybe around $1,250. And it is available for a number of different retailers worldwide. Uh, while the barrel and section are thin, uh, there are a number of elements I do care for on this pen. Uh, SD DuPont pens are very well constructed, and I feel like they're a quality product in the hand. It just has a quality feel to it. Uh, I do like the skull, and I do like the handwriting on the cap, and I care for the subtle depth of the cap lacquer. And I think most of all, I like the clever way the DuPont D was integrated into the sword to create an additional element. And as you'll see in the writing sample coming up, the nib is rather generous and performs well. Now, is it valued appropriately at that price? Well, I've said it many times, but when you are discussing pens in this price range, you are purchasing more than just a writing instrument. Uh, if you are looking for a pen in this range and you're a fan of the work of William Shakespeare, I feel that this pen would very much appeal to you. So now it is time for some measurements size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the SD DuPont Shakespeare. Uh, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. Here it is with a Pilot Custom 845. And then here it is with a Pelican M805. In regard to a few Visconti pens, here it is with a Homo Sapiens. Here it is with an Anniversary Edition uh, Opera Desert Springs. 
And then finally, the most recent uh, Visconti that I picked up, I believe I've shown it before, but this is the Ripple. Uh, and this is actually blue. It's hard to see here. They do have a black ripple, but this is just a very deep blue. And I just love the pattern that's on this pen. And it writes beautifully as well. And that's what it looks like in comparison to the Shakespeare. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Pelican M805, the Mont Blanc 149, and then finally, here it is with the Visconti Homo Sapien. Here we go with the writing sample for the SD DuPont. And this is the Shakespeare. This is a medium 14 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using here today is SD DuPont. Royal Blue. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice royal blue. It's a little bit on the lighter side, not quite as dark as Faber-Castell royal blue, and it's somewhat similar to Le Bon blue. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, it's a pretty distinct looking bottle. I like it. It's nice and wide. I love the wide opening. I do wish it was a little bit deeper though, because for the most part, you have to kind of come in at an angle if you have a larger nibbed pen. And in regard to the rest of the writing sample, Uh, as I mentioned, this is a very nice writing pen uh, that it's fairly smooth uh, and it lays down a, me uh, a very generous medium line. You can get a bit of flexibility out of here in regard to ink flow. It's fairly wet in regard to reverse writing. It performs just fine in regard to some fast writing. And the feed had no problem in keeping up. So here we have the SD DuPont William Shakespeare. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's the first pen in the pen is mightier than the sword line for SD DuPont. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what other writers they pay tribute to in future models. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.